Hello, welcome back to Silverstone Shooting Centre. I'm John Thorne, and this is our latest programme about BSA and BSA air rifles. We're going to be doing the R10 SE, and also showing you how to do a quick holdover when aiming your air rifle over different distances. Hello, welcome back. Right, air rifles, and shooting different distances. One of the problems with air rifles, as we said, is that the technology is all in the gun itself now. And the actual pellets themselves really are slave items to the technology of the guns. The problem with air rifle pellets is they're very light. They have to be, obviously, because they've been pushed by just compressed air, nothing more than that, no explosive charge. Now, generally, people shoot air rifles anywhere between 10 and 50 metres. But for those people who shoot, and they shoot into hunting, primarily things like rats, I don't like rats. Um, it's going to be difficult to know what distance uh, your target is going to be at. So what we try to do is use a trick called holdover, where you zero your rifle to a particular distance, and then you test fire that particular rifle at different distances, so you can see whereabouts the strike of the pellet is going to be. Now, one of the beauties we have at Silverson Shooting Centre is that we have targets lost different distances here, anywhere from between 10 metres to 50 metres. So I tend to zero our rifles here, uh, it's around about 20 metres, and then I have a holdover for if I'm shooting shorter distances, and then a holdover if I'm shooting longer distances, which when transferred out to the field, if you're looking at killing rats or anything else there, etc., you'll be able to aim the, your, your crosshairs either up, above or below the target, depending on how far away they are. Now, you can use this with retracting targets, where the targets come back and forth, but here we're quite fortunate, as in what I've done here, as you can see behind my shoulder here, is three blue target boards. One is set at 10 metres, one is set at 20, 20 metres, and one is set at 35 metres. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot a pellet into each particular target board, just one, and see whereabouts they hit. It should zero perfectly on the 25, 20 metres, which is where the rifle is zero to. Now I'm not going to change the zero on the scope. All I'm going to do is basically do is then literally shoot, aiming for the cross for the middle of the target at 10 metres, and see where the pellet goes to, and then aim again at 35 metres, and again, see the pellet strikes. That will give you an idea of whereabouts my pellet will hit, depending on what distance I'm shooting the target at. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is shoot three pellets, <coughs> one at 20, one at 10, one at 35, and then we're going to look at the targets and see what we find. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one pellet in at a target I've measured out at 20 metres, and I'm going to aim directly at the centre of the target, and hopefully if it's zero properly it will be perfect. Then I'm going to aim at a target that's 35 metres away, again aiming at the centre of the target, then I'm going to see where a pellet goes. Then I aim the same at 10 metres, and again same thing, aim at the centre and see where it goes again. I've got eye protection on, don't need ear protection on because it's uh, what's the error. Right, that's three in. Now let's go and find out. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk forward down to the range. I'm going through the 20 meter first because, frankly, if it's not zeroed, the rest of it's pointless. So I'm going to walk straight past 10 meter, make sure it's zero at 20 meters, then I'm going to go forward to 35 meters, just make sure it's zeroed on place. So here at 20 meters, hopefully, fortunately enough, we are pretty much in the centre. Quite a lot further distance. Now we're going to get some difference of windage here. 35 meters of we'll pull push a pellet off. So if we look down here what we've got at 35 meters. As we can see, we're a little bit down by about an inch or so, inch and a half, and over by an inch as well. Now, don't think a zero is going to be that much affected in terms of wind, but in terms of um, windage in terms of pushing it across, we are getting that kind of effect 35 meters. But as you can see, we've dropped down about an inch, inch and a half. So if we zero at 20 meters, we know at 35 meters that the pellet
20 meters, but there is. So it should technically be a little bit low as well. And there you go, 10 meters. A little bit low, maybe three quarters of an inch. Still zero perfectly, so no effect of, so no effect of wind. But it means essentially that if we're aiming at something which is at 10 meters away, then we need to aim roughly about three quarters of an inch low. If it's at 20 meters away, then we aim spot on. And if it's at 30 meters away, all the way back over there, then we have to aim about an inch and a half too low. So it should not be hard too high, so it's two and a half inches if it's an inch and a half too low. So 10 meters, aim up a little bit. 20 meters, aim dead center. 35 meters, aim up an inch and a half. All right. There are the three targets shooting at. As you can just see, aim round the side. And the far distance is 35 meters. The other one is 20 meters. This one is 10 meters. So what have been using to actually do this testing and zeroing? Well, this is the BSA R10 Special Edition. Brilliant rifle. Um, one of the most popular in BSA's range. Um, this is in its tactical style uh, black synthetic stock. But it comes in different kinds of stocks as well. Wood, multicoloured. Comes complete with a built-in moderator. And this has been fitted with one of BSA's own scopes. Uh, with a 25 pounds power um, overkill frankly for shooting at 35 meters but there you go but zooming is quite nicely again it's one of their magazine fed ones so there's your magazine literally you load up 10 and it's on a rotation magazine each time you fire bolt pulls back put some of one in so it's great fun um, also for the purpose of testing you may notice we've been using somewhat different targets so what we use for zeroing for air rifles here is an aim point. Now this is a military red dot target to be honest, zero target for them. But what's quite useful is it has these centimetre incremental squares that allow you for windage and for elevation, which is great news for zeroing with dot, red dots obviously because it's perfect for that, but also very useful for air rifles. So it means I can literally aim for the centre and I know pretty much on all the BSAs, one centimetre accounts for around about five meters of drop. So I know if aiming at 20 meters, I've got a centimeter drop going down to five meters. It's not as accurate as that particularly, but it gives you a good idea. As you can see from this particular test though, as we've done at 20 meters, zero perfectly. When it comes down to 35 meters, we're about an inch and a half too low. So there's a bit of drop and a little bit of windage as well. It crossed over to the right by about an inch. Then at 10 meters, there's about three quarters of an inch too low. So bear that in mind if you're taking out things of rats in the field, etc., or target shooting, it means you can try different things. Okay, that's it for this week. Uh, next show on the air rifle side is going to be another one of the BS air rifles, and this time we're going to start doing different kinds of competition targets where you can shoot. Even on the games you can play as well with different kinds of target types. But hopefully it was useful. Um, any comments, obviously please do subscribe, and use worth useful. Uh, any comments, good or bad, happy to hear them. Um, Hope it's useful for you though, but uh, see you again soon. Cheers.